So how was your trip? I know you went on a uh, sort of like like last minute uh, emergency trip, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, asked me to uh, to to lead the humanitarian um, um, help for Armenia. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, because my background from my mother's side, uh, they are Armenian, you know, and uh, it was it was very tough on in Armenia because in Europe the war is is uh, always difficult. But it was very interesting that you know it was a, a, a big mission for uh, for the French government and it, and for me it was very interesting to be involved to you know to connect with the people to see how they're working on the on the logistic term on the on everything and um, very 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 interesting with the Quai d'Orsay and you know who was in charge of uh, who is the director of of the of the crisis and support from French government. He was the former uh, Qatar ambassador for France, Eric, Eric Chevalier. I don't know if you met him. He was a French uh, ambassador in Qatar. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, Eric, Eric Chevalier, his name is. Wow, okay. Eric, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was very interesting, but... Uh, yeah. So you, you went on a, a very short trip, right? It was... No, 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 I went in Armenia. No, no. Uh, we, we put uh, a, a two, uh, two uh, 77 uh, fly with all the support inside. And I was in a fly to, uh, to go here, but, yeah, to make the, the, you know, the Médecins Sans Frontières, Red Cross, uh, and to give it the, the, the support that, uh, that they were expecting, all the medical staff. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, tough one. It's just an uh, amazing project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so that I was, I was in hurry. It was it was I was not supposed, but when your French president asks you, <laughs> yeah, you can't really say no to that. Yeah, you cannot say uh, no, and especially when it's you know when it's kind of diplomatic and humanitarian uh, uh, help okay. is is very important. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, so I think we can start. Uh, I think I, I can see some people entering the, the session right now. So um, I just wanted to say, uh, obviously, to welcome you. Uh, you know, um, obviously, we had the few, you know the the Generation Amazing Festival 2020. Uh, you know, this year ha had because of the pandemic and everything else. You know, we had to host it uh, live. I mean, on 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 the internet. So um you know we thank all our partners and everybody that came together to make today possible and and one of the you know our strategic partners is fifa and fifa foundation and you know you guys were a big support last year when we held the festival here in doha and, and you attended as well uh, yuri and you know i think it's great to have you back um so i just wanted to welcome you back to the ga festival 2020 um and you know thank you for joining us today i know how busy you are and everything else going on right now with you you know the work that you're doing so I just wanted to, you know, thank you for for being with us today. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the, the the theme for this year is is connectedness, and um, you know, in in such you know challenging global uh, you know times, um, I kind of want to ask you like, how do you see sports uh, kind of helping us today with with everything going on, with all the challenges that we face? Um, how can you know sports make uh, a world a better place? Nasser. Uh... First of all, thank you. Thank you again for, for the invitation. Last year we were together uh, talking in front of the of the young leaders. It was yeah. an exciting uh, moment and uh, we, uh, we bring with the FIFA Foundation, we bring some legends who were sharing our, their experience with all your leaders that you invited. And we, we, we saw how important is this kind of connection, live connection, of course, Today we cannot be uh, to your country sharing this moment, but we are connecting. And uh, and what is important as to be connecting is we are uh, exchanging, uh, continue to communicate, uh, uh, making this uh, in a difficult time. In this happening, uh, there's something that maybe is unusual. Unusual is everybody in the world um, are living the same things. Before there was war in uh, Europe or things in America, but it was all the time different uh, uh, time for each country, each continent. Mm -hmm. 
do they all the world are in the same position uh, we are we are living in a pandemic world where uh, we have to adapt ourselves and what what this pandemic bringing on the table is everybody is responsible he has a responsibility to the other one because if, for example if I have a, if I have the covid I'm going to see my parents or my family I can transmit the covid every everybody getting very responsibility for what what they do as a, a human uh, and an individual person and it's it will it will it will give it a thought and thinking about what we can do when the pandemic will be done and what we can uh, act as a, as a, as together mm -hmm. sport of course is uh, is the main point in the world where we are all connecting uh, uh, and i think what we can see right now is people wanted to do things that make sense in life, but not just for yourself, for the community. And uh, we will support all of all action from sport, football, uh, of course, but all action going by sport have to have a resonance, a new, a new way to thinking and a new way to communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, you're absolutely right. I think that's a, that's a great uh, point. And I think Again, like you said, you know, sports really connects everybody together. And I think it's a great, uh, you know, especially football. I think football has a transformative power to bring people together. And, you know, you set everything aside. And when you're on the pitch, you know, everybody's on the same level. Everybody's on the same, um, you know, there's no sort of any cultural, uh, you know, any sort of barriers. I think that's a, that's an amazing uh, power, I think. And, and that's, that's why, you know, the work that you guys do with FIFA Foundation is, is very important. And you know all the other NGOs and and like Generation Amazing, other other partners as well. I think, you know, um, Sports for Development is is an amazing uh, um, initiative, and I think it it really has a lot of potential to to again, like you said, you know, bring people together and overcome challenges. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know the work that FIFA Foundation uh, you know does specifically with youth and you know empowering youth and you know helping connect uh, youth across the across the globe? Obviously, FIFA. You know everybody knows fifa and the work that you guys do so maybe just tell us a little bit about that and i know you guys are also kind of um you know you have a new strategy now and maybe you can share some some of that with us as well yeah the the the, the coving give us something that we uh, we never had before we give us the time to to stay at the office because the foundation is always traveling is always on the ground you know coming going to support any ong or our government would need help, and and um, when the COVID arrived, we were stuck on the at the in Zurich at the offices, and uh, maybe it was a good time for the first time where we can be here and working on the long term vision. Um, I've been appointed one years ago as a CEO of the FIFA Foundation, and for me it was clearly that the beginning of of my uh, of of my time at the foundation was to create a platform, but more than a platform to create a program for the next 10 years. Um, we, we build the, the foundation of the foundation. And why it was important? Because if you really want to become leader in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, as an agency, you want to become leader, not just to be number one. Leader means that we want to help the most of uh, people that is possible. If we want to help all the people, we should have a strong foundation, and and is what I did it for one year. I built every step of this foundation. That tomorrow, as soon as the pandemic and the COVID will be fighting and and beat it, we can go out and working with all different partners. And, uh, yeah. and it was it was um, it was it was yeah, I, we I, we just finished a meeting right now about about closing everything you know uh, before december and uh, and we we so much proud about of course all of the program we have six main projects but one of the most uh, visible it would be football for school football for school is something that our president uh, janine fentino from uh, mentioned it uh, one year two years ago where this project project become 
at the beginning was 100% football, but, but right now is uh, and, uh, 50 football and 50 education, life skill. And, and to deliver to the life skill and education at the highest level, we partnership with UNESCO, and UNESCO designed it for, for the platform and application uh, more than 100 uh, life skill session that we will be mixed with uh, with football session. It means that tomorrow you are a teacher on the school, you will receive it, the, the platform through the app or book if you're not connecting, okay. and we will send you all, all the material from uh, balls, bibs, uh, t-shirts, and let's say that you have one hour in your in your time, you have one hour to make it sport or football, you can connect it, put it the number of girls or boys in your classroom and starting at the level that you're thinking you are. And 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 what is important is not to become the next Messi or Ronaldo. What is important is to reconnect with the with the kids at school. Why? Because when you are a teacher. You only teach, and what's the connection with your kids is only to teach them, to listen to them. This is fine, but how we can create it? Something in the classroom where all of the the teenagers are connecting through sport, like you say, Nasser. You know that what you're doing, you're using football to make it education. It will be the same. You, we will making connection at the school for the kids to practice sport, boys and girls. And I think this is this is a great challenge, but we are so excited about football for school. That's amazing. Um, do, you, do, you, do you have any? You know, the football for school program I think is excellent, and you know we've 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 seen it actually. We've we've heard a lot about it and stuff. Do you have plans to expand to like uh, you know on a, on a global scale, like to to different continents and different regions, specifically to the, to the Middle East? Do you have plans to kind of expand your programming in, in the Middle East? Because I know currently you're. You know, you have some programming in Jordan and Lebanon. Do you, ex yeah. do you plan to kind of expand to other other countries in, in the region? Yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, we're going we're going step by step. You know, we we already starting in in Lebanon. It was a, yeah. a, a pilot uh, programs in Lebanon, and we wanted to be sure before launching at the global level to be uh, to have some some content. And uh, and what is great and what we, we just we we're going. Finalized with UNESCO in a, in a few uh, few weeks, the, the final version, and we will be ready uh, starting next year to launch it globally. Our our goal is to do between uh, 25 and 30 country by years, and of course, uh, Middle East will be. Uh, we already translated all the content in different language, but you yeah. can using. It's, it's not just we give you the material and uh, that's it. It's, yeah. it's a real link between um, uh, school countries, uh, uh, Minister of Education, Minister of Sport, Federation, ONG on the ground, and the FIFA Foundation. You know, we, we're going to try to lead it, but not just to be alone, to make most of the people with us. And uh, why is important? Because, Nasser, you know much more your country than I. Okay, mm -hmm. what I can do is coming with you and 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 exchanging idea about what is the best for your kids, you know, and and us we're working on the on the on the platform that you will after using for yourself and for your for your younger generation. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. I look forward to maybe you know bringing this program to Qatar and 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 introducing it to to schools here. Uh, you know, obviously, you know you know about the partnership. We have a, a partnership with the Ministry of Education, and we have currently, um, you know, we've we've been able to reach over ten thousand students across schools in Qatar, and, and our plan is to expand uh, leading up to the World Cup. So I think you know we can also uh, do a lot of you know uh, great things together. I think in the future, um, I'm going to shift a little bit now and, and talk about the World Cup and and Qatar and, and 2022. So. As as a World Cup winner yourself uh, in 1998 uh, for France, yeah, there we go. Uh, you know, how do you how do you, how excited are you for for Qatar 2022? And you know, how do you see kind of the tournament transforming um, you know uh, youth and 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 creating uh, you know social change in the region uh, in the Middle East? It's it's amazing. It's amazing because uh, when you're organizing such a Big events like a World Cup, 
it's not just about building stadium and, and bringing the people for the game. It's you changing the mentality of a, of all the area, not just your country, but the country around yourself. And and uh, and this is amazing because you're feeling the mag the magnet of the World Cup. You're feeling the 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 highness of the World Cup, you know, and you want to be part of it. Uh, uh, I remember um, my first World Cup, it wasn't, when I remember I was in 74, but the World Cup was in Germany, you know, it was not far from France, but you feel it, you feel it. Uh, and uh, and I think in, in, in Qatar 2022, it would be amazing this, this atmosphere. First, why? Because the pandemic, the COVID would be over uh, I, I wish I, I pray for that and it will be the biggest uh, event after the covid where people can be together you know touching together huge together you know and this it will be something that unique and yeah. uh, and uh, as a, as a host uh, country you will have this uh, changing moment to hosting the world to your country and yeah. this is this is something great for you, and uh, and uh, I will be uh, I will be on your side. You know that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and, but uh, it's it's uh, I'm I'm delighted that this moment arrives of happiness because at the end the World Cup brings happiness. You know, sometimes you can lose him. I I won the World Cup. I lose uh, in 2002. We we fell, but. But the World Cup give you emotion, but nothing can bring it to you. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, absolutely. Um, I think you, yeah, we're gonna wrap up now, so I, I just want to give you kind of um, the opportunity to say a few words. You know, we have over 700 uh, youth from all all parts of the world, you know, tuned in over the last three days. So just maybe tell us, you know, maybe give them some advice or you know any motivational. Uh, uh, tips or any kind of anything you want to say to to everybody that has tuned in over the last uh, three days. It's it's uh, you know it's uh, it's maybe the the advice that uh, um, I'm telling to my to my kids to my to my family because when you're walking uh, like you are walking or like me uh, are walking we all all members of of our team are walking we're walking for a uh, as a family, you know, if you're working for a foundation, you're working as a as a family. You know, you, you cannot make a difference between kids. Kids, the kids. You know, there's no religion in the kids. There's no color in the kids. There's no boys and girls. The kids as the kids. And I think what is important is to, is to be honest and to 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 tell it to tell it the, the truth. You know, yeah. and for me, today we're expecting a lot about government. A lot, a lot about politics, a lot about our leaders. But what is very important is each of you are leaders. Each of you are are great leaders. It, I mean, you don't know, you don't need it to uh, achieve a big thing in your life to oh. say that I'm leaders. Sometimes small things uh, make you becoming a leaders. And I think what what the pandemic uh, teaches is first, we must take our responsibility. What is my responsibility today? What is your responsibility? And this is something that you should uh, 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 think about it. What, what I want to do, what I want to achieve, okay? And after, after when you are the answer, become the leaders that, that the community needs. And, and I love the, I love the, the term of young leaders, you know, and even if I'm older, but the young leader are the new generation yeah. and new power for the future. And I we're pushing a lot for the for the for the young leaders. And I know that you're doing an amazing work now for years about how you're creating the new generation of leaders. And uh, and uh, you are uh, you inspire generation. You inspire people. But uh, this is this is the new way to to thinking, and it, it will be it will be the new future, not the new future, the present of of uh, our society. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Yuri. Uh, you know the CEO of Your Foundation for tuning in with us and all the support. And uh, like you said, I think we 
look forward to hosting you here in Doha soon, uh, maybe ne for the next year uh, in the festival 2021. Inshallah. Thank you so much, and it's always a pleasure to be connected and talking to you. Thank you. Merci, Merci. Merci. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye.